Right, there we are. We're back. Uh, can you see me there? It's Scotty McClue. I should be back with you. And uh, George Raffer's watching. Welcome, George. Dinky-doo. And well done for staying, everybody. Kamal's there. Kamal Aziz says hi. I say hi to you, Kamal. We just disappeared there, folks. So tonight's show will be in two parts. But I got some very, very interesting comments. I had uh, a lady there saying, oh, so you're a Scottish nationalist. Well, I don't know how you got on to my feed. Goodbye. Now, could you imagine having a mind as small that you actually think, I shall go because you perceive somebody's different? Now, of course, as everybody well knows, I am not a political animal at all. I am certainly not a Scottish nationalist, but I do believe in independence for Scotland economically because uh, that would be the right thing to do. So very strange. Your lamps went off too. So there we are. Somebody, somebody did my lamps in. Uh, May Miller's watching Dinky Doo, Drew McKenzie, David Irwin, and uh, Alan Humphreys, Alfred James Wright, Alistair Bajak, James Allison, and Lewis Cunningham. Welcome back. I say, folks, lovely to have you with us. Uh, very strange. It just decided to take a turn to itself, and off it went. Alan Grant's watching. Uh, I think Labour have hacked your broadcast, says George Raffin. Yes, because we were just telling a few home truths. So there you are. But as I say, it's not actually political. It's just making a comment. Phew, you're back, says Robert Devlin. Of course, phew, phew, Robert, we're back. Excellent stuff. Johnny M. Linney watching. Ian Pew watching. Councillor Henry Anderson back with us. Dinky do, Henry. Lovely to have you with us as well. I wonder what happened to the lady there that said, Oh, you're a Scottish nationalist. I'm away. There we are sitting with her blue tweed. And a hairdo to match. Uh, Duffy JG is watching. Paul Fraser Doherty. All right, you madman, says David. Absolutely, David. Welcome, 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 everyone, I say. Sorry about the slight interruption. Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin watching in the States. Joseph Gibbons says, welcome back. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome, Scotty McClure. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform, international global show, and we discuss everything you want to discuss. Uh, one of the subjects we've been talking tonight is um, about the head of the London Fire Brigade, Danny Cotton, who was saying that uh, she thinks that Fireman Sam should be fire fighter Sam, so there's nothing stereotypical. Have we gone a bit mad, I say, with political correctness, or is this quite right? Good evening, Scotty, says Lee Farm. Best show in the world, says Daniel Watt. Daniel Watt, I thank you very much indeed. Can we ban taxis from the bus lanes? It just encourages greed, says Gordon Stilling. So there you are. So should we have a taxi lane then, Gordon? So instead of saying buses and taxis only, it says buses only. And the next lane says taxis only. And the next lane says pedal cycles only. And the next lane says L drivers and mopeds only. So there are no lanes for your actual driver. Should we have a separate lane for women drivers? So there you go. Um, how's it going? What TV shows do you watch? Did you watch Banshee when it was on? I'll tell you, I've been watching a movie channel recently. I won't say which one, but I was absolutely incensed and infuriated because once the film had finished, up came an announcer and roared about some program that was coming on. Of course, you've got a beautiful ambience. Somebody might just have died at the end of a movie and you think, Oh, that was heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And then the music goes, la da dee da dee 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 dee. And goes, well, don't forget, next Thursday, we've got another movie. And you think, oh, you've just ruined three hours. And don't talk about religion, politics, or football. You'll be okay, Captain. We will talk about nothing else, George, and we'll be okay, Captain. Bus lanes are for vehicles with 80 passengers, not a black cab with one lazy passenger who has money to burn. I say, oh, milk for the pussy cat there, eh? There's somebody who's had to walk it because they didn't have the money for the taxi. You are preaching. 
to the converted garden. I have been there and done it many a time. Love a wee tune, says Robert Devlin. Absolutely, Robert. Did you star in Still Game, says Kamalis? No, I haven't been invited onto Still Game yet, and I think I should. I have got a great line, just a small appearance. I go into the Clansman pub, and Bobby says, Oh, here he is, <laughs> the triplet. And I say, shut it, Bobby. And I say, while I've got my wallet out, though, could you get these two? Nothing! So there we are. That sort of idea. Uh, what's the score about continued roadworks and the new Queen's Ferry crossing, says Chris Harley. Well, there, there might be a few teething troubles when you're building something of that magnitude. And, of course, it is an all-Scottish bridge. We built it. Uh, so there we are. Tom Hutchison's watching. Dinky do. And uh, excellent to have you with us. So there you go. Yvonne McQuillan's watching. And uh, Gaz Rolly Jones. Dinky do. Welcome to part two. So tonight's show will be in two parts. So during the week, it'll be share, 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 share. Two parts. So there we are. Uh, the access roads are no finished. So Steve Webster, that's fine, Steve. They will be finished in time. Remember, this was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful feat of engineering. If all we can do is have a moan and a whinge about minutiae and detail after something like that has been delivered, then we should hang our heads in shame. Look at the big picture. Is your glass half full or is your glass half empty? Now, my answer to that is my glass overflows. My cup runneth over. Uh, there should be a vehicle lane just for you, Lord, says Robert Devlin. Robert Devlin, I thank you. Shug Plunkett, uh, Lorna Smedley Hardy is watching, dinky do, and Kevin Farrell, lovely to have you with us as well. You're watching the world's top talk show with the world's top broadcaster, Scotty McClue, capital S, small c, o, double t, i, e, the McClue, capital M, small c, capital c, l, u, e, and we are with you live on Facebook Live. We had an interruption tonight, so the show will be in two parts. Uh, time for a share point. Can everybody share, 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 share. The bridge is half finished, says Steve Webster. Good. Excellent stuff. Uh, see all these folk moaning about roadworks here and there. God gave you legs. Get out your car and walk, says Angie Thompson. Angie, very fair comment. All the fatties there, you know, and uh, I mean, even myself, although I'm a great bodybuilder, and everything. I've still probably got a couple of pounds overweight, uh, you know, and uh, a good walk is the thing. Get the Labrador out there and get a good walk going. Excellent stuff. Uh, Scotty's on Facebook Live. Charles McLaughlin, thank you very, very much indeed. That is tremendous. Jason Fives watching. See all these folk. Oh, yes, you're quite right. You're quite right. Now, uh, guys, a word to the wise. A little bit of housekeeping, of course. A lot of Scotty McClure around on social media. Share everything. Those of you that have got Twitter accounts, come and follow me and retweet, retweet, retweet. If you're a big organization and I am kind enough to mention you in my tweets, then make sure you don't blank me. Retweet, 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 and you will get huge, huge publicity from doing that. So don't think, oh, we are big. He's just we, you know, don't think anything silly like that because McClue is massive throughout the internet, massive presence online, hundreds and hundreds of thousands when you tally everything up. Uh, a bodybuilder, says Robert Devlin, absolutely, yes, indeed. Um, I'm building my tummy at the moment. Duncan Norville's watching. Dinky do, Duncan. Oh, chase me, chase me, I say. And uh, Sean McCormick. Uh, Colin Rogers watching. Uh, Duncan Norville, one of our great, great talents in the UK. There are a few fatties driving black cabs. Uh, they really need the punters back to counter the balance in the FX4. Well, I've seen them. I thought they were drawing a tar boiler behind them, some of them.
Gary Latter's watching. Dinky do, Gary. Lovely to have you with us. You're all watching Scotty McClue. We're live on Facebook Live, one of the world's top broadcast platforms. Sunday night, nothing gets past me. And the time, 25 minutes past 10. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. All right, Scott is a shunk pocket. So there we are, excellent stuff. Uh, Charles McLaughlin, you're watching, and I thank you for sharing. That was tremendous. Let's get the numbers up. A couple of weeks ago, 15,000 watched the actual video. Uh, I think we've got 7,500 last week, 4,500, 5,000, that sort of stuff. But share, share, share. It's all in the sharing, I say. North Lanarkshire, uh, Bin Shambles, Scotty, please highlight it, says Tony Richardson. Well, we're not a knocking shop, so we don't come on and just knock the council. But if there is a problem with the bins, I do hope it gets resolved. Ever think about going back on the radio, says Kamal Aziz. Well, the only thing, Kamal, I have to say is, excuse me, rubbing my nose there. Scott, and if I was on the radio, I wouldn't have bothered about that. I wouldn't have had to apologise, you see. But um, I'm actually bigger now than I ever was on any radio station. And that's saying something, because obviously the audience were a quarter of a million per half hour on uh, Scott FM, Scotland's finest radio hour. And of course, when we went to the northwest of England, the Midlands, the northeast of England, broadcasting nationally in London, that sort of stuff. Huge, huge figures. But the radio companies don't have these figures anymore. They don't have the personalities anymore. They don't recruit personalities. So there you are. They're looking for people who fit in. Why would you want to fit in if you were meant to stand out? So there we go. Dinky do, says Ron Stewart. Lovely to have you with us. That reminds me to put the bins out the night, says Stephen Webster. David J. Wise was watching. Ron Stewart, marvellous. And um, if we mind, what about the 9 p.m. start? Possibly, says Robert Devlin. Now, Robert, that's a very good point. Guys, I'm going to put this out to you. Would you like the Scotty McClue show on a Sunday night to start at 9 o'clock? Because we could probably do that from next week. But I don't want confusion and all the rest of it. Very, very important. Um, we had an idiot at the start that was going, is that 9 or 10, Scotty? And I thought, not funny because you're just confusing people. So we might do that. I loved your radio show back in the day, listening back in the day while doing my school homework, says Majid Wahid. Marvellous stuff. Yes, with a huge, huge following of young people still have... It's very, very interesting because radio stations used to say, so you're not knocking on a wee bit, maybe we should put them on the, on the, on the AM service, you know. Just a lot of nonsense, as I say. I remember at a radio conference, head of Radio 1 arrived when I was just about to start speaking. I thought, OMG, it's the head of Radio 1. And of course, he'd come there because he knew I had a huge youth following. And in actual fact, I still think if you put Scotty McClue on Radio 1, you'd get a massive following. But personally, I would like to go on BBC Radio 2. Uh, Scotty, 9pm is better. Fine, says Erica Meyer in Australia. Uh, back again, my phone died, says Andrew Mackay. Yes, Scotty, 9pm. Perfect, Scotty, dinky do. Right, I'm announcing it right now. Can every single one of you type it in to your social media and announce it? Next Sunday will be at nine o'clock. Now, the only thing is, when do these blooming clocks go back? So there we go. Is it next week? John Hodgson is watching. One of the finest broadcasters in the country. Tremendous Great Yorkshire Radio, a station I am very, very fond of. Definitely start at 9 p.m. so we can watch Match of the Day at 10.20. This is VJ Dukaram. Right, VJ, that's it. Next week... The Scotty McClue Show will be 9 o'clock. 9. Have we got that? 5, 4, 9. 9 o'clock. So I don't want anybody going, oh, what, what's happened? I tuned in and you went there. Listen to Scotty for a laugh. Don't get cheeky or he'll cut you off. David J. Wiseman, you're a wonderful poet, David. Excellent. The clocks go back on the 29th. What are we at now? This must be, that must be next Sunday, is it not? Saturday night. The 22nd, yes. 
So next week the clocks go back, but it's still at nine o'clock. So that'll be nine o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. We're on British Summer Time, although you wouldn't think it to look at the weather, for one more week. All right, one more week, British Summer Time. Next week we're on Greenwich Mean Time. So what I'm saying is nine o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, Scotty McClue's show. Televisions and radios all off then, and get your devices out for the Scotty McClue Show. John Rogers watching, dinky doo. Uh, so excellent. Paul Francis Carroll. Ah, ah, Paul Francis Carroll. How are we? Have we done solo, choir, swell, great? Uh, taps off, uh, still time. Uh, so there you go, so Robert Devlin, no problem at all. And uh, Michael McGuigan, yes, 9 p.m., says Michael. Okay, guys, I think we've established that. 9 o'clock next Sunday, all right? And if you can tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue at 9 o'clock on Facebook Live, saying Dinky Doo, I will tell 10 to tell time. Green at Commun Times, says Steve Webster. Why don't you do a phone-in? You can reverse the charges and make some money, says Jamie Hooper. I'd love to do a phone-in, but I need to put in a delay because we had one stupid little idiot swore the last time, and I thought, I'm not putting my name to that just because one little idiot swore. Of course, it ruins it for everyone. We can take calls right now on Skype, but, uh, you know, it's trusting people. That's the thing. Uh, Craig Gordon's watching. Agnes will not allow me to listen to you at 9 p.m. That's her bath time, says Gordon Stirling. We'll leave her with a, a submarine or a rubber duck or something, Gordon. And um, just uh, tiptoe down the stairs, you know. And uh, what have you. Uh, when do you start getting Collins? Why do you start getting Collins? Why do you start? Or when do you start? Come on, tell me uh, what you mean by that. Type it again. I 9 p.m. I might get up early next week, says Angie Thompson. <laughs> Tremendous. 9 p.m. on the 29th. Uh, I'll be there with a ribbon in my hair, says David J. Wiseman. Right, so next week we are one hour earlier. Nothing to do with the clocks, all right? Greenwich Mean Time, 9 p.m. And uh, that's a date, guys. Right, can we have sharing, please? We're past our share point. Come on. Share, 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 share. Um, Angie, how's things dinky do, says Ron Stewart, right? You two have a conversation with yourselves. You can't, I can't clash with Agnes's bath time, says Stevie. Too many Collins. We need more Daves and Peters, says John Rogers. That's right, 9 p.m. That's the date, says Robert Devlin. So next week, 9 p.m. sharp. We might need to build up the audience again. Not a problem. All right. Why don't you start getting Collins, says Kamal. Well, we do. We need to arrange something. See, I don't want to put Messenger on the actual broadcast device because people then uh, call in and it halts the device. They go, you have a message. Do All that sort of stuff. So there you are. So we'll need to work out how we're going to do it. We're running for charity. Can you give us a mention? Sean and Steph. Sean McCormick and Steph are running for charity. Excellent stuff. So there we go. Mary Carty's watching. She's just joined us. Hi, Ron, doing dinky doo. That pair are still having a conversation. Agnes is a new soap and a rope. I need to be there for her. Of course you do, Gordon. What about a shower-proof radio? So there we are. Um, Agnes can have a shower. It's quicker. So Steve Webster. There you go, Gordon. Steve Webster has suggested just a quick shower for Agnes. And uh, you can save the soap and the rope for Christmas. Give it to someone else. Uh, Anne Simpson's watching. Dinky doo, Anne. Lovely to have you with us. You're all watching Scotty McClure. And we're live on Facebook just for you. Uh, Elizabeth Campbell. Welcome, welcome. Excellent. You're just here in time. Now, have we shared? Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. What do you think about the idea that uh, Scotland is talking about being the first country to ban the smacking of children? Now, my only concern about this, we have a feature on the Scotty McClure Show, as you all well know. Uh, the two people that answer the telephones on the Scotty McClure Show are the lovable lassie of the big switchboard and the wizard of the big switchboard. Now, we used to have a feature where if the wizard got people's names wrong and that, we gave the caller the option of whipping the wizard, right? 
and uh, we could have uh, a pants up or pants down whipping of the wizard. And we used to call the wizard in and we say, now wizard, this is, uh, you know, this is going to uh, hurt you more than it's going to hurt us and all that sort of stuff. Hi Scotty, sorry I'm late. I was at the Jerusalem Post speaking up for the Palestinians. Skiddy in there, Scotty. There we go, Sandy. You're a brave man though. Excellent stuff. Uh, give a pound for a shout out, says Ron Stewart. Yes, guys, if you've got a spare pound or spare two pounds, go to uh, Scotty McClue's PayPal. If you don't want to go the GoFundMe route, and if not, go to GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. I think we're up about 480 quid, and we're uh, up a lot more on PayPal, but we need to have a lot more so we can build the shows. So if you're feeling generous, and uh, remember, Scotty McClue doesn't charge. He's absolutely free to air and accepts applause or derision on his merits. So there you go. So you might think there'd be more derision than applause. Or more applause than derision. So if you fancy popping a couple of quid in, thank you. The way it works is if um, 10,000 of you put in a quid, then we can start to move forward. Uh, Scotty, did you ever get an Xmas gift you didn't like and passed it on to someone the next year? Not quite, Angie, but I'll tell you what I have done. I'll let you into a bit of a secret. I used to get chocolates that I didn't particularly care for. They were very dark very dark chocolates. They're very dark and um, it had a to and from label on it. And assuming the people giving you the chocolates hadn't written on it, it smacks of a nanny state, says Jamie Cooper about the spanking of the children. Um, so uh, what we've got there, yes, I took the chocolates and there was a to and a from label on it, the, you know, to Scotty from Auntie Fanny, that sort of thing. If Auntie Fanny hadn't written on it, then uh, you could take it into the neighbours for New Year. So, uh, you know, there was a wee bit of that going on. But I think people knew, um, you know, the only risk that you ran was taking the chocolates back to the people who'd given them to you in the first place. So you had to remember, where did we get these chocolates from? So as you were going out the door with the missus, you said, see these chocolates there, who gave us them? Oh, I can't mind. Oh. I was wondering if we should take them. Uh, I need to top up Agnes's sherry throughout the bath time. And I get pelters. Pelters are okay, Gordon. McClure's taken pelters for years. And pelters from a lady in the bath. See where it leads. Uh, I'm enjoying the show, Scotty. Methinks I'll open a beer. Do you want one, says Neil O'Gormley. Although I haven't had any alcohol for a long, long time, Neil. No reason to give up. I just decided I couldn't be bothered when the uh, non-drive uh, limit came in and it was zero. And I thought, now, how do you calculate what you've had, how many units, how many hours will you be clear? And I thought, you don't really want to risk it because nowadays it's not a question of giving somebody a warning or that. You're actually a crim. You're a big crim. So there you go. Uh, Scotty, your own pirate radio station. Get it going, says Paul McCulley. No, 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 you can't do that. That would be, that would be, you'd become a crim as well. Uh, but it would be lovely, a huge big transmitter that covers the globe and just chat away. Uh, kids should thank their lucky stars. They weren't around for the belt, says David J. Wiseman. I know David J. Wiseman. The belt, I got it for talking and for laughing. And as you know, I don't talk and laugh. No, that's cured me, is not it? And so there you are. My family did it with an aftershave set lol talk was topped up with baby powder <laughs> you know who you all are says angie so there you are michael yule's watching dinky do so when did agnes give up the bucky steve wester wants to know so there we go okay that's enough leave agnes alone uh stuart buckins watching dinky do stuart a very warm welcome to the scotty McClure show we are of course live on Facebook Live tonight, show, remember, folks, is in two parts. Two parts, as we say in Scotland. Uh, even if we're not in Scotland, we'll say two parts, because we like saying that sort of stuff. And um, what I think you should do is share the two of them. It should be Mart Part 2. A clout round the bum did me no harm. I'm 41, and I still fear it when my dad says, I want a word with you. I think probably did you a lot of harm, Angie. Psychological damage, making you frightened of your parents. Everybody was frightened. Wait till your father gets home. Then we'll see what's happening. Ah, uh -huh. all that kind of carry. Oh, don't. Ian Williamson, thank you, Andy McCrory, Alex Robertson, thank you very much. 
No secret Santa in here then, lol, says Robert Devlin, the secret Santa. Do you remember that? Who gave us these? <laughs> Scotty, the SNP are going, what was that? The SNP are going to tax me more, says Sandy Howden. Sandy, you need to be earning something to get taxed, so I wouldn't worry, son. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it'll be a pound or two here or there. Enjoy the SNP, Sandy. Uh, I always say if you're mob, had actually not gone in with the Unionists, then Scotland would be independent and your mob would actually be in charge. It's a thought, isn't it? I need to rub the Swarfega into Agnes's back. Gordon! So goodness sake, you there. Just as she's been lying under the bus. So there you are. I didn't think you'd mind me being at Her Majesty's pleasure, Scotty, says Alfred James Wright. Yes, but I mean, you don't want to be in the old slammer, Alfred James Wright. For goodness sake, you know, it's, a, it's changed days. It's, it's very serious business there. Yeah, what I can see from all the reports is it's very, very, very unpleasant in there. Grace Mallon, can you tell Frankie to get back to sleep for school, please? Says Grace. Frankie, back to sleep for school now. So there we are. And keep your voice down, everybody. The, the lad's trying to get to sleep. Nanny State, Scotland. We'll all be sitting round the piano like the wee freeze within two years. No smoking, drinking, eating porridge, singing and weaving songs. Now, eh, so the wee freeze don't smoke, drink, eat porridge or sing weaving songs. The walking songs. There you are. There's a wee walking song for you. Ooh, diddly day. They pushed a by. They pushed a by. Absolutely. Um, and uh, who else have we got here? Yes, the nanny state. So there you go. Right, how's the time looking? Oh my goodness me. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself, folks. We're very, 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 very busy tonight. But of course, the uh, devil's in the detail. The sharing and sharing and sharing goes on for one week, you may have noticed. Um, no, still game's funny, says Davy O'Donnell. Of course it is. Uh, I didn't can Agnes was a welder, says Steve Webster. So there you are. Scotty for the X Factor, says Robert Devlin. Yes, I might do some poster bay on the um, on the X Factor. How do you think that would go? You know, you go out there and say, yes, good evening. And your name? Uh, Scotty McClure. Yes, excellent Scotty. And where are you from? From well, Scotland. What are you going to do for us tonight, Scotty? Push to buy. Uh, or a walking song. So there you are. Right, okay. Scotty's going to do push to buy. Thanks. Okay, off you go, Scotty. Right. Hey, lumba dee, lumba dee, lay da dee. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
Uh, a Bonnie Pussy says Steve Webster, absolutely. Uh, and the blue point, in the days when we read big papers, you'd have the Times or the Telegraph or the Herald or whatever, the Scotsman and all that, because they were interesting in those days, the papers, you went to grab them, you know, give us the paper quick, see what's happening. And I would be reading this, and this huge big blue point called Big Tom would come wandering across the table, wandering straight at you, and then he would headbutt you, a cracker with a big soft head. Have you got your ticket for the mother will panther this year, Scotty? Says Alex Robertson. I haven't, Alex, but it sounds great. Are you in it? What do you prefer, cats or dogs? Says Kamal. I obviously have had dogs all my life, and uh, I love my Labradors, my black Labradors, but I'm a huge cat fan. And I don't see, know if you saw I posted um, Mama, beautiful big black gorilla, and Mama was dying. And uh, the professor that knew her when she was young turned up. She didn't want to see anybody and she wasn't eating. Very, very weak. And uh, it was just a short while before she passed away. And when she saw the professor, she just went bananas. She just loved seeing him. Lovely big leathery hand. She's patting his head. And she's, ooh, with a great big smile. So you'll see Mama if you scroll down on Scotty McClure's Facebook page. It's very moving and very sad, but she's beautiful. Agnes prefers Swafiga and Ammonia to remove the stubborn stains. String. Ah, heartbreaking that video, says Robert Devon. Did you see it, Robert? It's beautiful. Mama, the giant gorilla. Could you give my Lindsay a big dinky do for abstaining from the demon drink for Super October? Pure dead proud of her, says David J. Wiseman. Lindsay, very, very proud of you, my dear, for abstaining. Excellent. We shall all abstain for a bit. Yes, I'm the king. In Jack and the Beanstalk and Motherwell, says Alex Robertson. Excellent. Always remember a pantomime when they had a problem. Uh, one of the actors had taken ill, and I got a telephone call, and they said, um, you know, we just wondered if you were free. And I said, well, what's the part? I said, it's one of the ugly sisters. I said, I am halfway there. <laughs> uh, dogs have masters. Cats have staff. So they go, yes, absolutely. I always remember um, opening the door of my big black jeep, and the dog jumped in the back, and a guy went past and shook his head as if and I said, oh, don't worry, he pays me well. Uh, oh, no, he didn't, says Steve. Was, oh, yes, he did. Behind you. Oh, where? Ho, ho. You know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, is the wooden poon banned now, says VJ. No, not at all. Uh, oh, I see for, a, for a, a smack for the wind. Yeah, I don't see why you should ever need to smack a child, to be quite honest. Uh, I think just a, 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 a serious wee chat. A nice wee chat. Uh, the children don't need to be frightened. Scotty, I know the breeder of one of your dogs. A gem of a lady, says John Rogers. I would think so as well. Absolutely. A gem of a dog, John, I can tell you that. Uh, you better hold on to your pussy when Donald Trump comes over. So there you are. He's known to grab them. Is he not a great cat fan? So there we are. How interesting. Um, I was thinking about... The hairstyle, you know, and I was thinking, if that's a fashion statement, how come there's only one of it? You know what I mean? Uh, Jeremy Corbyn refused to go to a Balfour declaration dinner, Scotty, says Sandy Ann. Ooh, Balfour. Did he not? So there we are. The Balfour divide, Sandy. Very interesting. Thomas Hines watching Dinky Doo, Thomas. Uh, a smack with a spottle, says Stephen Webster, the slipper. Did anybody get the slipper? So there you go. Uh, I mind years ago, Panto and the Civic, Andy Cameron and Tiger Tim pelted a football of my brother's face. <laughs> That's when the steelworker kids were given free tickets, says Angie Thomas. Absolutely some marvellous people. In fact, I think it was the late Phil McCall, not very big in the mother role, Panto. Phil, a great character. Uh, so there we are. I think he wears a skinned cat on his napper. John Rogers. James Michael Harvey is watching. Dinky do, James Michael Harvey, and thank you so much for your wonderful support over the years. It's very much appreciated. And that goes for all of you guys. Uh, what I'd like you to do, Scotty has now got a place on Patreon.com. So you could become a patron of Scotty McClue. And what we can do for that, for $5, you get a mention 
for ten dollars we could do a little ad or talk up one of your causes live on the program so go to patreon.com forward slash scotty mcclue have a look at that and see what you think a very 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 reasonable way to get an advert i can tell you that for uh, for ten dollars a month so there you go guys um excellent stuff now uh, what else have we got here? I'm just looking at the time. Oh, my goodness me, it's flying in. Can you mind, Scotty? We're all given a selection box on the way out. It was a very harsh winter that year, says Angie Thompson. I love these guys in Scotland. They were nameless and very often faceless, and they delivered chocolate, Easter eggs, Christmas selection boxes. You phoned them up and you said, Jimmy, I've got a do with the Waynes at Christmas. Um, is there anything, would you mind putting, aye, what are you looking for? Uh, I was wondering, a wee selection box or something, maybe a, a couple of pounds. Aye, I'll get, how many are you wanting? Right, I'll get that to you. These were lovely, lovely people, you know. It was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. I can remember a big shortbread manufacturer used to give shortbread for the youth camps in the summer and things like that. Terrific. Johnny Stracker's watching. Dinky do, Johnny. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, I can't mind, Scotty. Yes, the selection box. Scotty, I was at Murrayfield yesterday watching the hearts and the atmosphere in that ground. Rubbish. Rugby's for people who cannot get in a football team. Sandy Howden, you're talking to a rugby player right now. So less of it. Tight head prop. Second row as well. You don't mess with McClure, I say. Um, a wee night off from the great Alberto with a broken toe. But your show numbs the pain. Robert, you must be careful. I take it you went along to the old firm and got a game. So there you are. But you must be careful. Look after yourself. Because um, I remember a guy's car had broken down. And this guy got out and he says, Is there anything I can do to help you? And he says, uh, yeah, he says, I think, do you know anything about petrol pumps? He says, no, 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 no. He says, I'm a chiropodist. He said, oh, well, could you give us a tow? <laughs> there you go. Robert, do not think I am making light of your difficulty and your challenge. I send you strength, health, and well-being. And so there we are. Tell the great Alberto I'm asking for him. I saw him last night, a fine fellow. Uh, scrum down, says Michael McGuigan. Down first. Oh! Well, there we go. Um, thanks for accepting my friend request, says Kamal. Kamal, an absolute privilege to accept your friend request. Tremendous stuff. Agnes likes nothing better than a rub down with an old newspaper, says Gordon Stilling. And I would imagine your house is full of old newspapers, Gordon. So there you go. Newspaper comes in handy. They used to be great. I mean, don't try this at home now if you don't know what you're doing. But they used to be great for finishing the windies. There you are, you took uh, a copy of one of the broadsheets. The Scottish broadsheets were great for, for finishing the windies. So there we are. Or starting the fire. Tremendous. Centre page out, scrunch it up in the fire. A few wee twigs and leaves and whoosh. Off she went. Um, my cousin went to help a broken down car, lifted the engine lid thing, and it fell down and chopped six of his fingers off. Says Andrew, for goodness sake. So, uh, you know, I mean, what's his, what's his piano playing like now, Angie? Uh, what do you call a man who's almost home? Uh, VJ, I don't know. Hamish. <laughs> do you like fish and chips off the newspaper years ago? Bring it back, Robert Evans. I can remember, yes, going in and getting the fish and chips off the newspaper. And I remember the night a guy came in. In those days, one of the neighbours just took every way in swimming. Stuff like a Tuesday night or whatever. And he came into the chip shop and he's going, right, what are you having? And they're all going, ah, can I got a sausage supper and can I get a smoky supper and all that sort of stuff, a pie. Right, so that was going on. And um, he, he asked this wee guy what you want. And the, the wee guy was obviously out of sorts. And he goes, what are you wanting? Give it all that, you know. And then he goes round, he goes all the way and he goes, chips, 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 nothing! <laughs> all that nonsense. What's your best joke, Scotty? Well, somebody asked me recently, what does your wife do? And I said, well, it's quite hard to say. She sells seashells on the seashore. 
you know, that sort of thing. Uh, I was standing in the main road this morning. I put out my hand to stop a bus, but I wasn't strong enough. There you go. That sort of stuff. Uh, Kevin Allen's watching Dinky Doo. Carol Wilson and Dave Marshall's watching Dinky Doo to the wonderful Dave Marshall. Lovely to have you with us. So excellent stuff. Now, I'm anxious about time, folks. Um, a word or two about housekeeping, of course. Remember, next Sunday night, the big one, this program, the one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for not just one nation, but for the whole world will be at nine o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. Nothing to do with the clocks going back. Okay. Just the very fact we'd prefer it. We've taken a straw poll, whatever it means, right? Or a paw straw, if we were a pussycat. And um, we've decided that uh, next week will be at nine o'clock okay has everybody got that and throughout the whole week if you can all tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 the scotty mcclue will be live on facebook live at nine o'clock sharp greenwich mean time from the 29th okay very important why do bees hum scotty because <laughs> they didn't care the words think about it very good guy stops the car and picks up a witch and a hard shoulder Five minutes later, she touches him in the knee, and he turns into a lay-by. Uh, good night, Scotty. If I don't get a chance of Robert, Robert, please take care of your dear self. Look after your foot. Very, very important. And uh, another great show. We'll see you next week, says VJ. Yes, but see you next week at 9 o'clock sharp. All right. Also, get on to the Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Share, 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 share everything McClue puts out. Don't get fed up. Don't get annoyed. Don't get irritated. Don't give it all. So this McClue sharing stuff again. What's he on? Right? Just share it. Just get on and share it. If you've got a Twitter account, follow me on Twitter. If you're on Periscope, go on, look at the broadcast, share them. I've got something like 130,000 hearts. Now, I'm not moaning. I should have a million by now. I am. The world's top broadcaster, present company accepted and accepted. Cracky show.